Giovanni Papini January 9, 1881, Ibid. July 8, 1956, was an Italian journalist, essayist, literary critic, poet, philosopher and writer. Early life Born in Florence as the son of a modest furniture retailer and former member of Giuseppe Garibaldi's Redshirts from Borgo degli Albizi, Papini's mother baptized Papini secretly to avoid the aggressive anti-clericalism of his father. Papini lived a rustic, lonesome childhood. At that time he had felt a strong aversion to all beliefs, to all churches, as well as to any form of servitude which he saw as connected to religion. He also became enchanted with the idea of writing an encyclopedia wherein all cultures would be summarized. Trained at the Istituto di Studi Superiori 1902, he taught for a year in the Anglo-Italian school and then was librarian at the Museum of Anthropology from 1902 to 1904. The literary life attracted Papini, who in 1903 founded the magazine Il Leonardo, to which he contributed articles under the pseudonym of Gian Falco. His collaborators included Giuseppe Presolini, Borghese, Velati, Costetti and Calderoni. Through Leonardo's Papini and his contributors introduced in Italy important thinkers such as Kierkegaard, Pierce, Nietzsche, Santayana and Poincaré. He would later join the staff of Il Regno, a nationalist publication directed by Enrico Corradini, who formed the Associazione Nazionalistica Italiana, to support his country colonial expansionism. Papini met William James and Henri Bergson, who greatly influenced his early works. He started publishing short stories and essays. In 1906, Il Tragico Quotidiano, Everyday Tragic, in 1907, Il Pilota Sico, The Blind Pilot and Il Crepuscolo dei Filosofi, The Twilight of the Philosophers. The latter constituted a polemic with established and diverse intellectual figures, such as Immanuel Kant, Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, Auguste Comte, Herbert Spencer, Arthur Schopenhauer, and Friedrich Nietzsche. Papini proclaimed the death of philosophers and the demolition of thinking itself. He briefly flirted with futurism and other violent and liberating forms of modernism. Papini is the character in several poems of the period written by Mina Loy. In 1907, Papini married Giacinta Giovanoli. The couple had two daughters, Viola and Gioconda. <laughs> Before and during World War I After leaving Il Leonardo in 1907, Giovanni Papini founded several other magazines. First he published La Voce in 1908, then Lanima together with Giovanni Amendola and Presolini. In 1913, right before Italy's entry into World War I, he started La Serba 1913-15. From three years Papini was correspondent for the Mercure de France and later literary critic for La Nazione. About 1918 he created yet another review, La Vraie Italie, with Ardango Sofici. Other books came from his pen. His parole e sangue, words and blood, showed his fundamental atheism. Furthermore, Papini sought to create scandal by speculating that Jesus and John the Apostle had a homosexual relationship. In 1912 he published his best-known work, the autobiography Un Uomo Finito, The Failure. In his 1915 collection of poetic prose Cento Pagin di Poesia followed by Buffonate, Mashalita, and Strongature, Papini placed himself face to face with Giovanni Boccaccio, William Shakespeare, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, but also contemporaries such as Benedetto Croce and Giovanni Gentile, and less prominent disciples of Gabriele D'Annunzio. A critic wrote of him, Giovanni Papini is one of the finest minds in the Italy of today. He is an excellent representative of modernity's restless search for truth, and his work exhibits a refreshing independence founded, not like so much so-called independence, upon ignorance of the past, but upon a study and understanding of it. He published verse in 1917, grouped under the title Opera Prima. In 1921, Papini announced his newly found Roman Catholicism, publishing his Storia di Cristo, the story of Christ a book which has been translated into 23 languages and has had a worldwide success. <laughs> Fascism and later years 
After further verse works, he published the satire Gog 1931 and the essay Dante Vivo, Living Dante, or If Dante Were Alive, 1933. He moved towards fascism, and his beliefs earned him a teaching position at the University of Bologna in 1935. Although his studies only qualified him for primary school teaching, the fascist authorities confirmed Papini's impeccable reputation through the appointment. In 1937, Papini published the only volume of his History of Italian Literature, which he dedicated to Benito Mussolini, to Il Duce, friend of poetry and of the poets, being awarded top positions in academia, especially in the study of Italian Renaissance. An antisemite, he believed in an international plot of Jews, applauding the racial discrimination laws enforced by Mussolini in 1938. In 1940 Papini's Storia della letteratura italiana was published in Nazi Germany with the title Eternal Italy, the Great in its Empire of Letters in German, Uages Italian, die Grohn im Reich seiner Dichtung. Papini was the vice president of the Europäische Schriftstellervereinigung i.e. European Writers' League, which was founded by Joseph Goebbels in 1941-42. When the fascist regime crumbled 1943, Papini entered the Franciscan convent in Laverna, with the name Fra Bonaventura, largely discredited at the end of World War II, he was defended by the Catholic political right. His work concentrated on different subjects, including a biography of Michelangelo, while he continued to publish dark and tragic essays. He collaborated with Corriere della Sera, contributing articles that were published as a volume after his death. Papini had been suffering from progressive paralysis and was blind during the last years of his life. According to art historian Richard Dormant, Francisco Franco's regime and NATO used Papini's series of imaginary interviews Il Libro Nero, 1951, as propaganda against Pablo Picasso, to dramatically undercut his pro-communist image. In 1962, the artist asked his biographer Pierre Day to expose the pretend interview, which he did in Les Lettres Francaises. He was admired by Bruno de Finetti, founder of a subjective theory of probability, and Jorge Luis Borges, who remarked that Papini had been unjustly forgotten and included some of his stories in the Library of Babel. <laughs> Publications Collected works Tutela au père di Giovanni Papini, 11 vols. Milan, Mondadori 1958-66. Topic works in English translation 4 and 20 minds. New York, Thomas Y. Crowell Company, 1922. The Story of Christ. London, Hodder and Stoughton, 1923 Rep. As Life of Christ. New York, Harcourt, Brace & Co., 1923. The Failure. New York, Harcourt, Brace & Company, 1924 Rep. As a Man Finished. London, Hodder & Stoughton, 1924. The Memoirs of God. Boston, The Ball Publishing Co., 1926. A Hymn to Intelligence. Pittsburgh, The Laboratory Press, 1928. A Prayer for Fools, Particularly Those We See in Art Galleries, Drawing Rooms and Theaters. Pittsburgh, The Laboratory Press, 1929. Laborers in the Vineyard. London, Sheed and Ward, 1930. Life and Myself, translated by Dorothy Emmerich. New York, Brentanos, 1930. St. Augustine. New York, Harcourt, Brace and Co., 1930. Gog, translated by Mary Pritchard Agnetti. New York, Harcourt, Brace and Co., 1931. Dante Vivo. New York, The Macmillan Company, 1935. The Letters of Pope Celestine VI to All Mankind. New York, E. P. Dutton & Co., Inc., 1948. Florence, Flower of the World. Firenze, Larco, 1952 with Ardango Sofici and Piero Bargellini. Michelangelo, His Life and His Era. New York, E. P. Dutton, 1952. The Devil, Notes for Future Diabology. New York, E. P. Dutton, 1954 London, Air and Spottiswood, 1955. Nietzsche, an essay. Mount Pleasant, Mish, Enigma Press, 1966. The Circle is Closing, in, Lawrence Rainey, ed., Futurism, an Anthology, Yale University Press, 2009. <laughs> <laughs> Selected articles 
Philosophy in Italy. The Monist 8 4, July 1903, pp. 553-585. What Pragmatism is Like. Popular Science Monthly, Vol. LXXI, October 1907, pp. 351-358. The Historical Play. The Little Review 6 2, pp. 49-51. Ignoto. The New Age 26 6, 1919, p. 95. Buddha. The New Age 26 13, 1920, pp. 200-201. Rudolf Yukon. The Open Court, 38 5, May 1924, pp. 257-261. Short stories The Dead of a Day. The International 9 4, 1915, pp. 105-107. The Substitute Suicide. The International 10 5, 1916, pp. 148-149. 453 Love Letters. The Stratford Journal 3 1, 1918, pp. 9-12. The Beggar of Souls. The Stratford Journal 4, 1919, p. 59-64. Life, The Vanishing Mirror. Vanity Fair 13 6, 1920, p. 53. Don Juan's Lament. Vanity Fair 13, 10, 1920, p. 43. An Adventure in Introspection. Vanity Fair 13, 10, 1920, p. 65. Having to do with love, and memory. Vanity Fair 14, 2, 1920, p. 69. For No Reason. Vanity Fair 14, 3, 1920, pp. 71, 116. The Prophetic Portrait. Vanity Fair 14 4, 1920, p. 73. The Man Who Lost Himself. Vanity Fair 14 5, 1920, p. 35. Hope. Vanity Fair 14 6, 1920, p. 57. The Magnanimous Suicide. Vanity Fair 15 1, 1920, p. 73. The Lost Day. Vanity Fair 15 3, 1920, pp. 79, 106. Two Faces in the Well. Vanity Fair 15 4, 1920, p. 41. Two Interviews with the Devil. Vanity Fair 15 5, 1921, pp. 59, 94. The Bartered Souls. Vanity Fair 15 6, 1921, p. 57. The Man Who Could Not Be Emperor. Vanity Fair 16 1, 1921, p. 41. A Man Among Men. No More. Vanity Fair 16 2, 1921, p. His Own Jailer. The Living Age, December 9, 1922. Palace and the Centaur. Italian Literary Digest 1 1, April 1947.